Located on 225 acres in Garden City, Long Island, Nassau Community College, a member of the State University of New York system, has close to 20,000 students attend the school each year. The college mascot is Leo the Lion, and these are his stories of the school's absolute best and brightest who have graduated over the past 50 plus years. Let's catch up together as the Alumni Association of Nassau Community College proudly presents Lion Tales, a Nassau Community College Foundation production on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Welcome to Lion Tales, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation. My name is Aurora Workman. I am president of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association. I'm here with my friend and co-host, Dr. Linda Nadian, a proud graduate of Nassau Community College, and together we'll share stories that will inspire, uplift, and often amuse you. Each week, Aurora and I will introduce you to alumni of Nassau Community College interested in sharing their experience here at Nassau Community College, along with the secrets to their success. You know, over here at Nassau, we look forward to so many different student activities, and so for all those students who are on the grind and hoping to become student graduates, please look up on the website and become part of your alumni association. So we are so, and we want everybody to come in, and we want you to sit there and give us ideas on uh, what kind of reunions you would like to have, what kind of parties, but we most of all need volunteers. So please contact the alumni association and be Become a part of it. Look for many new and exciting events on the Alumni Association social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, and our web pages at www.nassaucommunitycollege.edu slash alumni. If you, our listening audience, has any positive news you would like to share about Nassau Community College alumni, engagements, births, graduations, weddings, and or accolades, email us at alumni at nassaucommunitycollege.edu and we will shout you out. Well, today's guest is Mel Garlic, former New York City correction officer, investigator for 20 years, who currently is a criminal defense investigator for the Queens Legal Aid Society, and of course, a proud graduate of Nassau Community College. Welcome to Lion Tales, Mel Garlic. It's class of 2000. Thank you for having me. So why don't you start by telling us about the Queens Legal Aid Society and as well as what you do for them? Okay, the the Queens Legal Aid Society, it's, uh, the Legal Aid Society, first of all, is a nonprofit law firm. And they have uh, three different practices. They have civil, they have juveniles' rights, mm-hmm. and uh, criminal defense. I'm a criminal defense investigator for the Queens uh, office. That sounds very exciting. And as an investigator, what are some of your biggest challenges right now? Wow, some of the biggest challenges. There's so many now. See, yeah. I'm, I'm a little older in life now. So when, <laughs> but when I first started as an investigator, we didn't have all this technology. So technology right. is an issue for me. Yeah. There's cameras everywhere. Right. Mm-hmm. And part of my function is to go out and see if I can obtain video footage of a possible incident mm-hmm. to help uh, defend our clients. And so there's videotapes on every building Right. Every yes. business, every bodega, All and the many areas. houses and stuff. And so sometimes when you show up there, there are the owners of the videotape don't even know how to operate, or the, the, right. the equipment. They have to call in a third party. It's time-consuming. Mm-hmm. Sometimes yeah. the, the footage is duped over. Mm-hmm. And so what's important for me is to get tech-savvy. And it wasn't. It's not so easy, right. and the equipments are different. So that's one of the biggest challenges is just getting video footage mm-hmm. and obtaining that. And there also another challenge would be getting people to to be confident in me. Right. So right. I have to talk to individuals and get them to share information that they may not want to share. Mm-hmm. And being that I'm from the Legal Aid Society, it's it's a private nonprofit organization, so we we can't compel anyone to talk to us. So it's all volunteer. Right. So, yeah, that's interesting too yeah. because again, you have to sort of not coerce them to speak with you, but you have to try to give them, uh, you know, that leverage that they can sort of shed light on a situation. So you have over 25 years experience in this field and there's a lot of talk these days about prison reform Uh, what are your thoughts on that well right now today they just signed senate just signed the uh first step act right Right. yeah that just happened so that was that just happened Mm -hmm. 
I think I think there is some reform that needs to be done, mm-hmm. and what what that what that is offering is to create programs designed to reduce recidivism mm-hmm. right, and yeah. to allow some prisoners to earn credit towards a early release and things of that nature. So it gives them a potential to correct or realize their wrongs and get out. Right. I, I think it's a good thing. I think it doesn't go far enough because what the First Step Act is just focusing on the federal system, which right. only makes up maybe 10% of the inmate population in the United States. Oh, okay. So it doesn't serve the state yeah. or, or the local, like New York City. Right. And so uh, so it's still work th- that needs to be done. And I, and I think that sometimes people uh, deserve a second chance. Right. Yeah, because yeah. I think, you know, coming back out into society and having to sort of assimilate back where they have old habits that they, they have difficulty breaking and then they come out and they're doing the same thing and then they're going right back in. Right. How, and they, how, do, they, how do we stop that mm-hmm. cycle? Well, we have to set up a, a support system. Right. A good support system, and it, and it starts with the First Step Act, where, where they create programs to prepare them to step out back into society and and just get back into the workforce. Right, but a lot of people, too, they also have, um, you know, they step out and they step back into society, but it's their old environment, you know, so the environment hasn't changed, right. and that becomes a cultural... That, that, that's, that, that's very true, and they yeah. go, if you go back into the same culture and you surround yourself with the same the same individual or the same type of individuals, mm-hmm. it, you, you, you're, you're bound to repeat those same behaviors. I've seen that in, in individuals I've known, mm-hmm. a young man that grew up in my community, I try to help him. Mm-hmm. He he went to prison. He came out. I tried to speak to him, and he just repeated the same thing. Mm. So it, it doesn't work for everyone, right, right? And and there are individuals that work for do do we do we just throw the the, the concept to the side and do and don't do anything? No, right. I think no. yeah. Look at the, some of the success stories, and maybe right. have those people help the people coming out after them right. because that would be you know something that they could say well this is what i had to do in order to stay on the straight and narrow to avoid right. going back right. and mm-hmm. to avoid the temptation of of doing the same thing again right right mm. and so you have to change your surroundings and if if they set those programs in place right. with the proper counseling yeah. and nurture them till they walk out the door we will have better success i guess yeah, you know, hopefully that um, a lot of times you have the people who are transitioning back into the communities, too. And you're absolutely right, Mel. The support systems have to be there. It has to be. You know, they support, and a lot of people come back and they don't have the support of their family. But we'll continue this. You are listening to Lion Tales on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I am Aurora Workman, along with Dr. Linda Nadian. And our guest today is Mel Garlic, currently a criminal defense investigator for the Queens Legal Aid Society and an alumna of Nassau Community College. So we were just talking about um, you know, some of the challenges in the First Step program and people coming back into society and I know that um, one of the roles, aside from being an investigator, do you have any um, roles as designating programs or, you know, design or, or designing and implementing programs for the community? Uh, no, I, I, I've i worked on certain things in the community. I'm an advocate of, of self-help, uh, just... Mm-hmm just supporting people verbally you know people get yeah. in, involved in a lot of programs yeah. but I give back when I raise my kids all their friends came to my house and I support them and <laughs> yes. I nurture them yes. and that's, that's also true. giving back and that's oh, also yes. supporting someone and watching them go through life mm-hmm. I'm also involved in other things mm-hmm. like Toastmasters which is a non-profit international organization it's, it's, it's a self-growth program mm-hmm. and you work at your pace. And so I, I kind of steer people into those things and mentor people who, who want to improve their public speaking right. abilities and their leadership skills. That's and I help them program. with that. So, yeah, we, we speak about that a lot, about the public speaking and the courses that you may have taken here. Mm-hmm. Uh, was yeah. that one of them? Uh, no. When I, when I came to NASA, no, I focused on criminal justice. 
You always wanted to be in the. Well, I, well I, you were you you were transitioned into back, coming back to NASA. Or you transit what we call those who want to remake themselves. Or, yeah. Or reinvent themselves. Reinvent, reinvent themselves. Yourself. Reinvent yourself. <laughs> well, when it when I came when I came to Nassau County. I was already working as a New York City correction officer, mm-hmm. and I was raising a family. I was married, I, and I, and I mm-hmm. was secured in my position. But I knew at the time that I would be able to retire in 20 years and still be at a young age, mm-hmm. and then what's next? Right. And so I was going to use my my background in law enforcement, mm-hmm. and so I thought the best degree would be was criminal justice. Okay. It, would, it would serve me after. And there was also, there was an article I read in the 90s, mm-hmm. and it was it was highlighting one of the government agencies that were going to privatize a portion of it. Mm-hmm. And it was the U.S. Office of Personal Management, and they were going to take their investigation division and privatize it. And I read this article, and I and I became inspired by what they what they did, yeah. and and that kind of helped me make a decision to be to, to be an investigator. Yeah. And so. you have twenty years experience as a New York City corrections officer, and then five years experience as a special investigator for the United States Office of Personal personal management and yes. are now as a criminal defense investigator and when you did graduate from Nassau um, some of those uh, the degree in criminal justice for example and how well do you think Nassau Community College prepared you for that endeavor well I think uh, I think it prepared me well I, I was able to apply everything I learned and, and, and my course in criminal justice to what I was currently doing in, in, in corrections. Mm-hmm. Because once I started here, I was able to transfer into the department's investigation division. Oh, where we where we investigated uh, department corruption mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. employees misconduct, mm-hmm. it was like the it was like the mirror. Of- yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, so mm. staff didn't like me anymore. So. <laughs> yeah. I used but, to be in the office of labor relations, so yeah. I know what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> so I got a lot of frowns, but it, but Nassau Community College prepared me for that, and mm-hmm. and and i and i did very well there and i was well respected mm-hmm. and it also prepared me for once i when i retired and I, and I took that position mm-hmm. with the U.S. Investigation Service, which was the privatized unit oh, that they okay. yeah it was from U.S. and we did background clearance investigations mm-hmm. for the federal government, particularly for the U.S. Office of Personal Management. So I was well prepared by my education here in criminal law, right. administrative law. And criminal investigation. Yeah, and you juggled several things in order to make the, your education possible. You had school and work and your family. And we do have, you know, many listeners and students right now that may be struggling to keep up. So, do you have any words of encouragement for them? Uh, stay focused yes. and uh, purpose, yes. and, and that's all it is. Just, just stay focused and, and have a purpose. Yeah, you know, when you see that the end is coming, that someone's actually, you know, that you've you've earned the degree and you've completed all the coursework, and it seems like that struggle. But then when it actually happens, you know, how did that feel for you? We oh, were just saying it felt it felt fantastic. Yeah, it felt mm-hmm. it felt it fantastic, and it was a great feeling to have all my family there and see it. And I was and I was a first time my family. I was I was a first time graduate. graduate. Yeah, yeah and my that, was, that must have been big. So, yeah, yeah. Was, was, <laughs> that was, was, was big. big. Was you know, I, I still, I mean, I've been here at NASA working uh, for 23 years. I'll be 24 in January. And of uh, the time I've been here, when I hear that the first time graduates and first time families, and then yeah. you see at graduation, you know, a whole section yeah. <laughs> is a family cheering on. It's mm-hmm. such a great feeling, and it's and, and I know it must give you a wonderful sense of accomplishment. You are listening to Lion Tales. Today's guest, former alumnus of Nassau Community College, and currently working as a criminal defense investigator over at the Queens Legal Aid Society, Mel Garlic. My name is Linda Nadian, along with Aurora Workman on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Are you pregnant and scared? There is no need to panic. 
Too often, newborn babies are abandoned by their frightened mothers, but thankfully, there is a way to prevent these tragedies. Learn about the Baby Safe Haven Law, where any EMS worker, firefighter, law enforcement officer, as well as licensed hospital staff will accept an infant less than 30 days of age with no questions asked, because you are protected under the law. It is safe, legal, and completely confidential. Don't hesitate. Give yourself and your baby a future. Visit any hospital for more information. No cops, no costs, no parents. A message from the Anthropology Club of NASA Community College, the Sociology, Anthropology, and Social Work Department, and the voice of NASA Community College 90.3 WHPC. Welcome back to Lion Tales, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation, on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Dr. Linda Nadian, along with Aurora Workman, and our guest today is Mel Garlic, former graduate of Nassau Community College, former New York City corrections officer, and currently working at the Queens Legal Aid Society as a criminal defense investigator. Now, let's add stand-up comedian to this list. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. back to that. I almost read it now. I said... My God, from like, criminal you don't look investigator. That funny. <laughs> <laughs> criminal investigator is a stand up comedian. I said, I gotta hear this. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> yes, yes. So, you in, in 2008, you sort of enlarged your capacity by trying something new, which was stand up comedy. So, you yes. tell us about that. Yes, I did. Well, it, it came, it came a, you know, I'm a man of a certain age. I always tell that, especially <laughs> on stage. I'm a man of a certain age. So, I've been through a lot. And you go through changes in life. And so, my kids, my youngest, I have three daughters. Yeah. The youngest two were in college, mm -hmm. and now I had the void because I used to um, coach girls' basketball, and my okay. kids kept me busy. Now right. now they were away. Right. Yeah. Now I had nothing to do, <laughs> and I get this I get, it was an empty nest, mm -hmm. and I get this card in the mail from Governor's Comedy Club oh, yeah. <laughs> promoting a stand-up stand comedian class. It was mm -hmm. called Stand-Up University. So I took it with no... Uh, with no expectations right. mm -hmm. and it was a seven week course and at the end of seven weeks you get into a live show and you do a seven minute set and I did it and the first time I hit stage it just took me it was like an addiction yeah right. <laughs> so after that I start doing open mics mm -hmm. performing all over getting into contests and I won a couple of contests, and then I began producing my own shows and things nice. of that nature. And Were you been, writing your own I write material? All my, yeah. all my material. Yeah, you must have years and yeah. years of material. You must have a lot of material, material right. to pull you, you from. have, uh, you know, cell block H material, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't do a lot on on on, 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 on correct, um, like the, when I was taking the class. They said you should do more about corrections, but I just it was hard to find the humor. You know? Yeah, <laughs> because hard to find the humor. I know because it's like it's it's some of it's so un, unreal but then at yes. the same time you want to laugh at it but it's hard to laugh it's, at it's it it's hard it's hard yeah. it's that's hard. a great transition and, and it's a great for, for you to diffuse and right. you know decompress from it, it, it's, yeah, yeah it's very it's a good release it's a, yeah. it's a very good release and I always struggle when I first came to Nassau mm -hmm. I struggled with going into taking criminal justice or going into theater because oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I always well, wanted to be part of that but I said well you know I could probably do financially better with criminal justice, so I never, I never did it. Probably. So that that itch was always in me, and this right. was an opportunity. So it, it also served another desire I had. And then there have been you have had some acting opportunities on on shows like Blue Bloods and The Blacklist. And how did that come about? That that came about. One of the things in, in stand up comedian, they said you'll get more gigs if you had spots on TV. Right. And if it was a recognized face on TV, so so the process is that you'll start off doing extra work, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I, I I joined Central Casting, and they would call me out for gigs. And I, and the first the first job I got was with um, Blue Bloods. Mm -hmm. and, and they film in the city. They film in the at city at Silver Cup. Well, that's one of the locations, but sometimes they go on site. Oh, right, right yeah. A lot right. of locations. So this one right. was really in a banquet room, and I came in there in a suit, and I was right there with Tom Selleck. Oh. And I had a beautiful shot, and, my, and when it aired on TV, the whole family was yelling. <laughs> <at me>. <laughs> <laughs> so so it, it was a nice experience. 
And I just enjoyed it, and I tried it out for a little while. I don't really do that anymore too mm. tough. Yeah. yeah, and then how do how do they pay you for that? They say the extras make good money during the day. Well, they, I don't consider it good money. <laughs> but they pay... Extra money. <laughs> yeah, they, it's good extra money. Yeah. And, and they pay... They pay um, they paid the standard. And yeah, it, it, it's decent. And they feed you well, right? Craft they, services. Yes, they feed you, you well. They feed you very well. Do you well. get to keep yeah. any of the clothes, or they make you take it off? No, actually, actually, you, they you tell you own. you wear your own clothes. Yeah. They give you a description of what they want you to bring with you, what what, what you want to wear, and you bring like two or three outfits, mm-hmm. and then they'll look at it and they tell you what to put on. Okay, yeah. Well, that's yeah, that sounds yeah. really fun yeah. though. Yeah, that so, sounds like something that we you know we should do for the alumni association yeah. is one day feature stand up with Mel Garlic. I would love <laughs> to do that. That would be yeah. great. Yeah. It would be great for our funders. And what, when you do that. musical, you like musical theater or just theater dr- dramatics in general? Dramatics, yeah. In general. I can't sing. You can't sing. <laughs> you, you, a lot of people that can't sing, they still do musical theater. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that's wonderful. So you know, that's a really grand, great contrast. But I know that helps you just breathe, and you it, 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 it helps you breathe. And I, I'm, I'm a. I think people should just try different things in life. You mm-hmm. only you only live life once. If you have a desire to do something, just do it. Right, yeah, that's just true. Just do it, and you'll and you'll you'll never regret it. Mm. That's right. important for our listening audience to know that you know, I mean, people do have these really serious careers or serious goals, yeah. but humor. And I'm telling everyone who's listening, you gotta keep your humor. Yeah, it, it, it does your body great. It you does. know, it, it does. does your body does. great. And so I am so happy that. Um, you know, we can sit there and notice from some, a lot of times we want to talk to our students and we want to bring uh, what we call a lecture series in. So we bring alumni in to talk to them. And I remember at one time when I was one of those people that came in and they said, well, what are you going to speak on? Uh, They said, I'll tell the students some of the most important things you need to know about being at Nassau. And I just was able to tell them, you know, Get here early and find a parking spot. <laughs> okay, <you know>? Yes, <laughs> you know, that was the nightmare back then, and don't it's still a nightmare. Do not. It's still a nightmare. <laughs> it's still. Where am I going to park? It's a little easier now because they have redone the parking lots. But I would sit there and tell people they would sit there, and you know, I'm coming from a professional background, and then I go, "Well, she's yep. going to give the students a talk." And I'm saying, "Okay, you have a couple of choices. You're living in East Your class is at nine. Do not leave at eight forty-five. Okay." <laughs> Oh, right, those right, kind of things. Right. So we tell them important things. But you're listening to Lion Tales on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHBC. My name is Aurora Workman, along with Dr. Linda Nadian. And our guest today is Mel Garlic, class of 2000, and currently working as a criminal defense investigator at the Queens Legal Aid Society. So you're also a member of Toastmasters. You were mentioning that earlier. Yeah. And so... T- um, Tell us what what does Toastmasters do for a person? A growth. Okay. Well, Toast, Toastmasters will help you improve your public speaking ability, and it also is is an avenue for helping you build your leadership skills. Mm-hmm. And so, what Toastmasters has is it's an international organization. It's in one hundred and forty three countries. Mm. It's. It, start, it was started in the U.S., mm-hmm. and it has two tracks. It has a leadership track and a communications track. Mm-hmm. So I became a Toastmaster because I'm a stand-up comedian, yeah. and I wanted to be better at transitions mm-hmm. and ad-libbing. And the more you speak, the more comfortable you become on stage. Mm-hmm. So I joined Toastmasters, and I invited my wife, and she joined too. Oh. And she took that leadership track, and she became <laughs> yeah. the district director of all New York. Uh, wow. Is she funnier than you? I bet. No, she, she's not funny. She's, she's too serious. <laughs> but, but I enjoy. So I, I it, so it, it it built my communication skills. Mm-hmm. It, it it helped me socially. You become better socially, right? Yeah. And those butterflies you get in your stomach when you yes. talk oh, in yeah. front of a group, it it it. It, it soothes down. Yeah, mm. and you know, many people really, they do, they fear standing before an audience and then yeah. having to speak publicly, but you seem to sort of welcome the opportunity now that you yes. can get up there and do that. Yes. yes. Yeah, mm. and it does seem like the sky's the limit for you, and are there any other plans that you have still in the future for, for this work that you're doing now? For uh, 
just generally, obviously, um, with the legal aid, that's one piece. But well, yeah, I'll I'll be there. But once I leave uh, the legal aid society, I want to really pursue stand up comedy. Yeah, oh. and take that take that to the next level. I mean, I'm yeah. I still pursue it. I perform regularly. You're getting I a pursue. call from me, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who are some of your uh, co- comedic idols? Who who influence you? Uh. I really like. I, I was. On, I shared a stage once with Dave Gaffigan. Okay. Yeah. I, I enjoy him. I like Dave Chappelle. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. I yeah. like Chris Rock. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And some some of the older comedians. Uh, well, George Carlin. George Carlin is yeah. one of my mm-hmm. favorites. Every mm-hmm. that's one of everyone's favorite. George yeah, Carlin, definitely. And, and Richard Pryor. Yeah. And, Richard and Pryor. I performed with his son last year. Oh, Richard yeah, Pryor's that's son amazing. is doing stand up. Is yeah. he as funny as his? No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah. But he's a he's a good guy. He's very young, mm-hmm. and he's pursuing it. And he's doing he's doing pretty good. He's doing pretty. Yeah. Good. He's traveling nationally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and it's good that uh, we're talking about this in these transitions because a lot of people, and especially our listening audience, our students, need to know that you can do more things than one or right. have. Right. a second release you know everyone tells me I have like five job hats there yes. <laughs> yeah. I tell them I only get paid for one the rest of volunteer work right. but and you know it's good that still some, cause sometimes students just think that you know okay I have to do this I have to do this, this, this but they don't know life opens up so it op- much it opens up and then and then things one thing applies to the next right it's true it's true it really does and I, I do a lot of jokes in my stand-up about my family and growth and experience. <laughs> but I also do stuff about uh, being a criminal defense investigator, interviewing people, mm-hmm. going out to the scene and talking to somebody. I'm looking for your dad. They say, oh, my dad's not home. He's on the boulevard. <laughs> I said, oh, at the barbershop on the boulevard. I said, oh, he, he's a barber? He said, no, he works in front of the barbershop. <laughs> 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 so I get my bootleg tapes from him. You know? <laughs> yeah, and that's amazing. So, what is one of your most uh, wonderful mm-hmm. memories of Nassau Community College? Well, it uh, it was a beautiful campus. The classrooms were had nice sizes. They mm-hmm. were small, and one of the, one of the biggest things I enjoyed about it was very diverse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and. And I love diversity. Yes. I love diversity. I come from a diverse family. Mm-hmm. It's one of the things I talk about in my stand up. Mm-hmm. But and 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 it was very welcoming. Mm-hmm. And it was very cost effective. Yes. Very much so. That's very true. so. So <laughs> it, I I really enjoyed I really enjoyed my experience at Nassau County. But I was an older student so I didn't mm-hmm. really socialize that much. I, mm-hmm. I came here, I worked and and I did it but mm-hmm. it worked out. It was it was a great experience. That's wonderful, and I know that. Um, do do you remember or recall any event that you may have gone to that was your just like this is outstanding? <laughs> the only thing was my graduation. I didn't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Was it at Nassau? It was at Coliseum? Coliseum? It was at. Mm, or was it? Was it on? No, it was at yeah, Nassau, Nassau Coliseum. Coliseum. It was at Nassau mm-hmm. Coliseum. Yeah, it was. At That's yeah. fun. That must have been really. I know your family. Florida, yeah, they enjoy. I had my mom here. Everyone, oh, that's so a blessing. That's yeah. awesome. That's great. Really nice. Was your wife? Um, did she go here? Or? No, my wife went to Malloy. Oh, okay. oh. We'll, we'll still like her. Yeah, that's not that <laughs> far away. We'll yeah, still like her. Yeah. We'd like to thank our guest, Mel Garlic, criminal defense investigator for the Queens Legal Aid Society, stand-up comedian, public speaker, and a proud alumnus of Nassau Community College. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. We want to thank you for being with us. My name is Dr. Linda Nady, and along with my fabulous friend, Aurora Workman, president of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association. The creative director of Lion Tales is Rudy J. Breedy. This show is a production of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association. Visit nassaucommunitycollege.edu slash WHPC for more information. Available as a podcast on iTunes, Android Podcasts, and Spreaker. Lion Tales is powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. We'll see you next week.